yeah, so I just wanted to, uh, you know, get us together to talk about, you know, especially, you know, I made the video about 2025, you know, and, and the things that uh, they had predicted, this group Deagle.com had predicted about what was going to happen. And the reason that kind of got my attention is because of all the other things that's going on associated with it. You know, so we had back in 2017, we had the, the uh, Revelation 12 sign that happened. And then we had in 2019, we had the 400 years. Was up. And then, of course, scripture said after the 400 years, you know, you're going to go into this uh, time where that nation that, you know, that that held uh, Yah's people will be judged. So we know that, you know, this, this, and then we had the eclipses that point to judgment, you know. And so we got all these things. And then we had this organization that's predicting these dire things that's going to happen not only to the United States, but a lot of the European uh, countries. And they seem to me to be related to the slave trade nations. Now, I could be, I could be uh, a little off there, but it just seems related. All this stuff seems related to me. And um, so I'm not saying that the 2025 from, from Deagle is prophecy. I'm just saying it should cause us to think about why in the world would they make such a dire uh, prediction about what's going to happen uh, to the United States, and so for for you know before we chime in, I just want to show these numbers real quick, and then we're going to jump in. I want to see what y'all think about it. Okay. All right, so I pulled up this the forecast here, um, and there's a link in the video. So if y'all need to, uh, you know get that for yourself. Make sure you download this so you, your family can look at it. But when you look at this uh, here, it, it tells you by percentage what the population changes are going to be with certain countries, right? And so starting with the UK, there's a 77% reduction in the population. You know, then you go to Ireland, it's 72%. United States, third, at, at almost 69%. Puerto Rico, about 68%. And so you just go Germany, 65, Luxembourg, 61, Israel, 48% population reduction. Uh, you know, you got Libya at uh, 45%, Iceland, France, Spain, Bahrain, all in the 40%. And then you got Australia, Cyprus, and, and, and Angola kind of threw me off a little bit, but it's 33%. And then when you study this, I'm not going to go over all of them, but percentages get smaller as you, as you go along. And then when you get to certain countries, you end up having, uh, you start to have increases in population. And so you can go through there and just look at the nations that start to have the most increases. And, and most of them are below, below the equator. All right. And the next thing that it talks about is the GDP. You know, of course, with the population reduction, you're going to have, you know, GDP is going to get smaller. But I think it's, you know, significant to look not only at the smaller uh, GDP, but which nations are they forecasting to increase their GDP? Because that's going to tell us who they think the major players in this thing will be. And uh, so, uh, you know, I, I just thought it was, I thought it was really interesting, some of the nations that they are projecting, like Benin, they're going to have a 103% increase in their GDP. And then uh, you got, uh, I don't even know who that is, Azerbaijan. John. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, you got 182%. Thailand and Romania is, is, is close to 90% down, so. Let's see, who has this a huge increase is Afghanistan. They have a 450% increase in their GDP. Russia has a 105% increase. So anyway, I just wanted to show that real quick and we can come back to it uh, if, if you guys want to, but I just wanted to show that real quick just to, just to get the conversation uh, started. Is that a gross out. number or is, is, is that a gross increase or, or net number? Um, I'm I'm not sure. Let me see. I I would I would think it would be gross. I'm just wondering why you know why would you know some place like Afghanistan 
mm -hmm. see an increase. I'm wondering, is that because of folks migrating to there as a safe right. or something like that? Right. That, yeah. That's that's what I'm curious about, too. And since it's GDP, which is gross to make the domestic product, mm -hmm. I, would have, I would have to say it's, it's the gross. But, yeah. So... Good question. Do you think Afghanistan's GDP might be affected with what they they might be supplying to pharmaceutical companies? Is a certain plant. Hope you. Yeah. 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 Well, that's one of the reasons I believe we were over there to begin with uh, was was because of the um, the opium. Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah, we tried to control that that inventory, and then yeah. then then something else that might. You know, like I said, if if you if you're seeing a a a, a drastic decrease in countries to the west of that, there may be an influx coming in from the west of the mm -hmm. population. And so I had to study the data a little bit more, to see you know, and 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 get a bit a little bit more scientific on what what nations are increasing, you know, and which uh, the most and which ones are uh, decreasing in population because it's all there in there. But yeah, I was just curious from you guys' perspective, you know, what what when when we when we mentioned that the United States, what do you think in your mind might contribute to that reduction in the uh I mean, you know, do you think it'll it'll be a natural disaster that happens? I mean, I know, you know, I hear all the time about, you know, what would happen if if the volcano beneath Yellowstone Park were to go up, you know, what would cause that? Um, you know, we have we have bricks going on right now because, you know, Russia is under a lot of sanctions. And, you know, BRICS is, if in case you don't know what uh, BRICS is or someone in the audience don't know what BRICS is, it's an alliance of Brazil, Russia, India, um uh, South Africa, who's to see? China. Yeah, China. And so they're developing their own currency so that they can uh eliminate the need to trade with the American dollar. Because right now, almost every transaction around the world has to be converted into the dollar before it even if the US is not even involved in the transaction. If someone in uh, Nigeria wants to buy something in Ethiopia, for, for you know, just you know, they will have to convert their currency to dollar, and then you know, and then buy the the other currency before they're able to do the transaction. So everything around the world, and so because of that, the United States has a stronghold on a lot of these nations because the United States can decide, you know, whether to allow their currency there or not. You know, uh, sanctions. They can put sanctions on on countries because of that. They can, you know, and so it puts a stronghold on a lot of nations. And so with BRICS, you've had over a hundred countries I know that have applied to become a part of it. Um, I know Saudi Arabia has looked at it. Turkey has looked at it. Turkey. It, that's huge. That Turkey has looked at this thing. So they're having a big meeting in October. I think October the twenty twenty second because they're looking at when they're going to implement this new currency. All right. So if that goes into effect, especially with Saudi Arabia involved and Turkey looking to get involved, then the only thing that the American dollar has going for it right now is oil. It's called the petrodollar. So if there's nothing to hang its value on, what does that do with the currency of the United States? Well, you know, I, <clears throat> um, just recently, you know, Saudi Arabia did not re renew their petrodollar agreement with the United States. I mean, we're still floating on the petrodollar right now. But even Saudi Arabia, in anticipation, I believe, of potentially joining the BRICS, has said, you know what, we're not, we'll, we'll let it float for now, but we're really not going to bind ourselves to this agreement that we've had for, for a minute now. So, truth be told, the only thing that the U.S. dollar really has it for, going for it right now is military might. It's the fact that the, we are, that the United States has a base on every continent. 
more than 160 something bases worldwide. And it's the threat of force that really is floating, I believe, the, the dollar. There's no value to the dollar. Um, and ever since Nixon took us all, took the United States off of the uh, gold standard and just completely uh, took any value and then replaced it with that petrol dollar, there really hasn't been any intrinsic value to the fiat currency. Um, but it's interesting to think that 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 even the, the Saudis have said, you know what, we're really not really interested in, in holding on to this too much too long too much longer, which is really it's telling. It's telling on on a on a worldwide scale on a worldwide on a worldwide scale. It's very telling to think that the Saudis have said that we're not even going to let our oil back you necessarily, and that we're we're reserving the the, the chance to. Uh, to move on to something else like bricks. As far as um, we're gonna talk about that deagle. As far as those those plunges in um, in populations are concerned, I was thinking about that. I told you we I I had been watching that that site since two thousand eighteen, and they made that site disappear. And so when you when you posted that, I was so grateful that you had posted that deagle site. And what information you managed to glean, I should have grabbed it when I had an opportunity because I try to tell people about that. And I would send them to the site to ask them the very same question. What do you think is going to happen in 2025 that something's going to go down where almost a third of the population, two thirds of the population of the United States is just going to be gone? What could that be? So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to discussing it further. I'll, 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 I'll stop there for a moment of time. You, you make a, a real interesting point. I had not really thought about it that way, um, D Mac, you know, about the, you know, the military might of the uh, United States being the, you know, the thing that's keeping the, the world's attention. You know, um, I think it was what sometime late 60s, 70s when, you know, the the dollar, US dollar stopped being based on gold. And they started using this terminology, the faith and confidence or credit or something of the United States. Uh, but but nobody ever, as far as I can recall, ever questioned faith in what, you know, confidence in what, you know. So you know, what is the what is the reputational concern that folks are hanging their hats on to say that we're going to still use the dollar? And you think about you know, how the, the nation's debt is you know is in the trillions of dollars now. Um, I don't know, you know, I I know. I know people and I know businesses that have had their, you know, their credit shut down because the, you know, the 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 lender lost confidence in their ability to repay. It was just, it was too much of a risk to the lender to continue to have that amount of debt hanging out over their books. You know, so they they would call the they would call the the loans of the, the business or the, the, the person. I, I had many of those conversations. And so when you think about, you know, the lenders to the United States. You know, at what point, you know, does somebody say, you know, that there's just too much risk there for me and I'm going to uh, have to call your debt? And what I hear you saying is, you know, the, the counterbalance to some country, you know, doing that is, hey, you know, if you, if you call our debt, man, we're going to we're just going to turn our, our weapons your way and, and point them at you uh, because you, you're just you're just not going to do that and think you've got that type of leverage over us. So that's a, that's a real interesting interesting uh, thought process and concept I hadn't really considered. But yeah, I mean it's real interesting because especially when you consider when you when you start talking about debt and and being a borrower, you know, because it was in the eighties that we went from being the greatest lender nation in the world to the greatest mm -hmm. debtor nation. So it's interesting to me that that when you talk about you know our might and our power being the thing. And what would happen then, because you have the two of our greatest uh, lenders, China and Saudi Arabia. You know, you know Saudi Arabia owns a large portion of of the of the stock exchange um, items. So if if those two countries are leveraging out of our system, and they're the ones we owe. And we and we see that that the dollar might destabilize. 
the question would be how far would the United States be willing to go to prevent it from happening? Then the second question would be our, you know, they know this mm -hmm. already. And what are they willing to do to counteract what they think that the United States might do from a power structure standpoint? So to chime in, um, it's a game of chess. You know, the, the other countries have been watching and watching and taking and taking, taking all that the United States have, has been dictating, so to speak. You know, it, it's we have this mighty military. We want you to give, give us this or fill in the blank, face these consequences or these sanctions or these, these other things that we can do to you. And most historical accounts of those nations that have taken a similar approach, after a certain point in time, they lose, they lose their potency because the other countries have figured out the game. And, and, and so it becomes, it becomes a waiting game. But the thing that is not on the side of the U.S. now is the fact that there is a, there is a, a biblical timeline that has been met. There is a deadline that has been met, 2019, 1619. So even if years past, the United States has been able to manipulate, control, um, covert operations to make to get to 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 keep its talents in the world systems to benefit itself. Time's up. Time's up, and and so with the BRICS nations, I think they know that. I think there are leaders around the world who are just as intelligent as the leaders here, or more intelligent, that have been keeping up not just with the economic. The power and the economic ability and the resources of, of us and other countries, they've also been keeping up with the prophecies too. Um, I think I actually believe that 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 um, telescope that, that is now called Lucy out west. Yeah. I think we see what's coming, but they are trying. They're doing everything they can to keep the wool over the world's eyes. So that they can keep some type of control because that is just a reflection of who they're serving. They're they're serving the counterfeit. They're serving the the the, the one who's trying to keep us blinded to the truth. So I, I'm saying that to lead into answer your. I think you asked a question earlier, Kendall, about um, the populations and why um, we think they will drop like they will. Well, if we're thinking about how these different agencies and countries are putting their plans in, 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 in play. They're also, uh, there's also been a major plot against the, the population of the world. 70% to 80% of the world's populations have been given something for the sake of keeping the peace here. <laughs> They've been given something. If I remember correctly, on the, on the Deagle um, data, I saw the United States population decreasing by almost 70%, like 60-something percent, right? Mm -hmm. a, a manufactured decrease, but I think the manufactured decrease is also being allowed because of that timeline and deadline that was, that, that's biblical that was met. So now, here we are with transitioning into the judgments. And and Yah will, will, as we know, Yah will allow people, places, things, spirits to be used to implement judgments and those things that take us in the direction that his will will always lead us. And so it's, I hope that helps add some, some, some thought to this. Um, but I think there, there's been a long game uh, with other nations and the U.S., with respect to the economy, the military power. And then if we remember, uh, over the last several years, there's been um, an objective of diminishing the, 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 I guess, the projection of strength in our military. Just think about what they've allowed. So there's, there is a conundrum of, of, a, of a litany of, of chess pieces that are in play to manufacture the the bricks 
that noticed it. So they, they're seeing the opportunity to take advantage of, okay, the United States is on the direction of, okay, they're not as strong as they used to be. The United States, they're still trying to put it out there like they are, but they, you know, they, they have been in inflation for too long. The market is now, the, the majority of the things here in the market are not affordable by the average person. Now they just drop the interest rate, okay? And you got half million dollar homes that back in 2005 was $100,000. So the, 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 the storm is almost like the perfect storm. You have everything starting to mix and turn and churn. So now the other countries see it. They've been waiting for it. They have their chess pieces in play to make their move because they checkmate. But the United States all the while has been arrogant and prideful. And so the pride is now falling, causing the fall. Um, so starting from when we shifted from gold to the petrodollar, uh, that was a deal. That was a deal they made. They probably knew then how long they had. Because they, they, they think, they collect data, they, they foresee, and they, they, the United States doesn't get involved in anything that they can't gain anything from. Um, so with all these deals they've made, all these positionings of their threat pieces, i.e. their troops and, and military bases across the world, they, the United States, for, for their time, have controlled it. But again, 1619 to 2019, okay, the deadline and timeline has been met. Now the shift is, has begun. We've seen it. We're waking up. The uh, all Hades or all H-E double hockey sticks is broken loose since 2019. There are wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, floods, all the things that we're seeing. You have the 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 the, the people over in the in the Middle East and Israel and Lebanon and Iran. All these things are happening. There's propaganda. There's there's all these narratives being pushed to to get everybody on board with the attempt. To again manipulate the world into the talons of what the what the U.S. wants to achieve, but I also think that it's more so the bird, left wing, right wing, playing their roles to drive the bird in the direction that, that is actually going to go, but nobody knows the bird is going in the direction of the Antichrist. Yeah. So said a lot, but that's that, that's my few cents to to add thought to this discussion. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely going in the, in a in a certain direction, you know. And when you were talking about the kind of, you know, when you talk about the stronghold, when you guys talk about the stronghold that the U.S. had on the world for a while, it's obvious that it's dimension. I think one of the areas that I'm specifically concentrating on because it's it's there in, in biblical prophecies, you know, because everything shifts back to the continent of Africa. And that's the one area where the United States is starting to lose its 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 control. The United States and its allies. So we've had, uh, I, I think, it's uh, Niger. They, they they kicked France out. Mm -hmm. All right, and there's another nation that they kicked France out, and then they're kicking the United States out of some of the, some of these nations. And the nations that are coming in that they're that they're cooperating with are the BRICS nations, China and Russia. So China and Russia are getting a stronghold. China's coming in and building roads and bridges and and all of these things all throughout the continent. You know, and they're not going in and trying to force, you know, from a colonization standpoint. Now, will at some point that backfire, of course, because that's where a lot of the uh, you know Israelites are. So uh, at some point during during the course of prophecy, that's that's going to turn too. But but as for now, it looks more appealing than the uh, colonialization that you know the world has been under uh, for centuries. And so you see the you know, United States and and they're and they're desperate. That the, the way they're talking, they're really desperate about you know. Uh, and and so what does a desperate people do? And that, I guess that's. That's that's a question, uh, you know, that, that that we need to really pray on and consider. What does a desperate people do? You know, sure. Desperate nations attack. You know, they they lash out. You know, um, 
I mean, there there are there are some movies that that I've seen that just kind of, that kind of depict what desperate nations do when they're starving, uh, when they don't have any any uh, fuel for for heating and all that, when they don't have resources, they they mount up and they send their troops to war, go and take, go and conquer, and then bring and pillage, bring it back. Um, that seems to be the evolving option or the evolving thing, the, the thing that has evolved into the option that, that countries like the U.S. Um, seem to always go to uh, when whenever they feel a threat of, okay, well, uh, what do they have over there? Oh, they got more oil than us. Well, let's go over there and, and, and see what we can take for ourselves. So, you know, they have more gold or, oh, they're trying to back their currency with the gold and resources of their continent that is 10 times our size. But well, we got to stop that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to add. You, know, I want to piggyback on you, Dante. You, we all know the expression: if the only tool you have is a hammer, then everything else begins to look like a nail. And I think we've, I think we're starting to see. We've begun to see in real time the weakening of. U.S. international soft power. The United States uh, at one time was more able to accomplish its will throughout the world without having a direct hand in it or seemingly direct hand in it. And when we think about the, um, the revolution in Iran in the 1950s, that was a CIA op. They've, they've admitted to it now and they 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 made sure that that the that US soft power was able to go in there and co-opt the people's will into creating that revolution. We've seen it, we saw it with uh in the 1980s when uh we, we were looking at um Nicaragua and Noriega down in Nicaragua. We've seen it in in the in the Caribbean. Interestingly enough, one of the one of the areas where United States soft power didn't work and and their hard power didn't work as far as a, as far as a regime change in our own hemisphere is down there in Cuba, and you notice it at Cuba and Haiti, and you notice in Cuba and Haiti those these two places they've been they've been stifled when it comes to the development internationally and in what what the United States what the United States considers its backyard. You are not going to prosper in defiance of us in our backyard. And so those nations have been held in check economically. I mean, the idea that Haiti is still being forced to pay billions of dollars of its GDP to France for having liberated itself from the tyranny of French is just ridiculous. It's, a, it's, it's, it's another world kind of thinking. What are you talking about? We owe you. you know, like, really? But, but the United States Back that up in the UN year after year after year after year after year. They back that up. Their bankers, United States bankers, back that up and said, yeah, you 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 owe France for, for breaking away from our from our leash. How dare you? You know, Cuba. I mean, the, the Cuban people have 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 had no choice but to become innovative in the way that they 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 create they, they make they create agriculture in the way that they create. Um, uh, or, or I should say, keep their vehicles running. I mean, you, under the under the pressure of that soft power, is where is where the United States has been able to execute that. And when it's not able to execute that soft power, then it comes out with the harder stuff, so to speak. And I think what we're looking at worldwide, and it it does go back to prophecy. It really does, because we really began to see this stuff break down in 2019. I mean, it's just like all of this stuff started really happening in 2019. But what's happening in my in my mind is is tied directly, as you said, Dante, into the prophecies. You know, it's interesting to think that there are individuals who we may or may not know who are in positions of national influence and power, or or should I say, in positions of controlling those who have national interest and influence and power, who who know the prophecies of the scriptures and know exactly who the scriptures have been prophesied and have been have been ruling the day 
dreading the day that the prophecies would actually begin to manifest themselves. And, you know, sign one is, I think it started in my own mass or maybe trickled in in 2015. Well, that's I woke up 20, late 2014, 2015. I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is talking, this is talking to us. It can't be there. Who, you know, you start reading this stuff and you're, you know, and then you, and then when the, the Holy Spirit and Most High begin to draw you in and you start looking at the scriptures for the way the scriptures, and even the, even the, how do I say it? The, the scriptures as they've been pre presented to us by by the Catholic Church, they weren't able to erase all of the evidence that would lead us back to the Most High. Is that making sense? Even though they 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 shunned the Ethiopian scriptures and 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 and, and said, ah, it's, it's heretical, but we know that the the Ethiopian scriptures have more validity than the ones that they placed before us as 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 canon. <laughs> In more respect, in in, in, in that the, the things that we have uh, as canon are were in the Ethiopian scriptures long before. So why why you go why did you go so far as to as to ban those books and to keep those things from us and 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 the the the, the public and not in in general? Why did what was so important? What was so critical about those particular things? It's the prophecies. They've been looking at prophecies that we haven't had at our at our disposal up until around now. And now the most high, I believe, is beginning to open the books. And those who have ears to hear ears to hear and eyes to see and a desire to seek after him diligently, he's beginning to open these books to us. And we're beginning to see exactly how much we lost and how much they have to lose as a result of our awakening in the earth. That's yeah. what I should say. Yeah, that's the only uh, the Mac. The thing that they they feel they have to lose, they feel entitled to. Now think about that. They feel entitled to something that they stole, um, that they you know created these these different um, hierarchies of titles and religions and denominations that they still control. They feel entitled to it. They, they stripped it from our people, but that goes back to the carpenters that were sent after us, our uh, judgment and our, and our uh, for our disobedience and hard-headedness, and then our being, our being scattered across the four corners of the earth. They took advantage of that. And in taking advantage of that, but they also fulfilled the prophecies of we will build houses and not live in them. You know, we will plant vineyards and not drink from them. They, they are the ones who benefited from all of that. So here we are. Again, we hit that we hit that timeline, we hit that end of the timeline, and now they're 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 scared because think about all the trauma they caused our ancestors. Yeah, and still, you, yeah. And you think about there's two the two elements that were present when we were coming up out of Egypt. You know, when it comes to when it comes to the attitude, mm -hmm. the one the, when you look at when you look at Pharaoh, his pride was top notch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had an immense amount of pride. No matter how much truth you told him, he, you know, it just hardened his heart. That's where we are in this nation. No matter what you tell these people, how much truth you reveal, it doesn't matter. Their hearts are hardened. And at the same time, you had a people that were under persecution. So you had these two elements going on. And, I, and I'll say this next one and then I'll, 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 I'll pass it back. We came out of, of Egypt, went into the wilderness, and there was a group of people that came after us and they were messing with us. And they would attack us in our most vulnerable position. They would come from behind, you know, attacking the elderly, you know, where the, you know they were straggling behind the children or whatever. And they would attack from behind as our, as our weakest point. And it made the most hot. I mean, it just really boiled the most hot over. 500 years later, I want y'all to hear what I'm saying. 500 years later, we get a king, Saul. And most high tells him, listen, uh, one of your first assignments is I want you to go wipe out all the Amalekite. This is 500 years later. This is the long memory that the Most High had. 500 years later, he said, I don't want you to spare any of them. I don't want you to spare their cattle. I don't want you to spare none of them. 
that's your that's your duty. And he said, the reason I want you to do this is because what they did to you when you were coming out of Egypt. Now, think about it. You can say, well, we weren't alive back then. The Malachi could say, well, then were my ancestors. I didn't have nothing to do with it. You know, why do I don't owe anybody anything? You know, I wasn't there. I wasn't a part of the slavery. I wasn't a part of this. I wasn't a part of that. But the same judgment. 500 years later. And so, you know, if these people were in the right spirit, they would see that unless they repent for what they've done and what their ancestors have done and, and try to make amends for that, then the same the same people that they descended from in 1492 and before that who were persecuting us and putting us on these ships and separating children and raping our, our and, 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 and burning us at the stake and, and they just took all of that and brought it over here. It's 500 years later. You know how difficult that is, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's 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 difficult to you know to to say. I I'm going to accept my role and my ancestors' role in this, and uh, I'm going to repent. You know, I'm thinking about the uh, the scripture in in Psalms 83, and it talks about the host of nations who conspired, you know, to 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 make the name of Israel no more, and you know, and most of the time when I think about that, I think about the effort that this group of nations have put into trying to get us to not know who we are. But if you if you pause for a second, and, and, and there's more to that conspiracy, you know, you know, they they put effort into changing their identity so you can't relate who they are in Scripture to who they are today. Mm -hmm. And so there's a good portion of people, just like we don't know who we are, that's a good portion of people that don't know that part of the, 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 those nations that have been conspiring against us. They're doing it, but they don't know why. Mm -hmm. They just they just continue to do it. And so now you, you're talking about everybody repenting. Well, nobody knows who anybody is anymore. <laughs> so, I do. So, yeah. well, thank you to that point. Um, so a couple of things that, that come to mind. So if, if through Adam... Humanity received the punishment of sin, death. It was imputed to us from, from one man. That was the judgment from Yah. Okay? If that happened, and then if if Yah also says to Yasharel that if you disobey me, here are the judgments, here's the punishment, here's what's going to happen to you if you don't, if you if you don't obey me. And that was generational. It was imputed into us. Why wouldn't he hold the bloodline of those that did the atrocities to us to account? Yeah, I mean, I mean, ex exactly. So if 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 y'all makes the statement, he makes this statement. We don't make this statement. He makes the statement and says he is not a respecter, a person. So if I did it to my people. I'm gonna do it to you, mm -hmm. right? And he and he's still telling us as a people. I think Leviticus 26. We we'll go back and look at that. He said, he says, as a people, y'all got to come to back to the reality of why you're in the situation that you're in. And I'm expecting you. I don't want you to blame your enemies. I don't want you to, what you talk about what the Europeans did. I don't want you to talk about any of that. I want you to talk about what your fathers did. Right. And I want to talk. Once you talk about what you did in order right. to be in the situation, right. and I don't want you to blame nobody else. Right. That's okay. that's 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 what the father is telling us. And so the requirement for us is it, the same for them. They're gonna have to not look at anybody. They can't come to us and say, "Well, everybody has slave." Oh, well, it don't matter because this, that, and the other. Whatever excuses we've all heard, you know. Just like we've got to repent for ourselves and our forefathers, they do too. They do too. And they won't. You know, I feel that that idea. I think honestly, I think I'm from, I'm guilty of it. I can't speak for everybody. I'm I know I've been guilty of it in my life. I never really understood the most high. When I say I never understood him, I mean I didn't understand the way he functioned and the way he the way he 
how he sees things from his perspective. I never will. What I'm saying, this understanding that I have of him now is not like the understanding that I had of him back then when I was practicing Christianity. You know, the, the God of Christianity yeah. in my mind was one who, who, who forgave my sins and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness. But I was never given the perspective, the long, the long memory of the Most High. I was never told how the Most High, he doesn't, he, he doesn't forget. <laughs> you know, he it, it's not like he he doesn't forget and, and he forgives. But at the same time, you if you if you if you do something counter to his instructions and his word, there are consequences to the fact that he said, I'm going to respond this way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so that response may not come immediately, but it will come. It's coming. Much like, when, when, just much like when he told David, he said, you know what? I forgive you. I, you're, you're saying, I, forget, I forgave you before you even asked. He said, but the sword's never going to leave your house. You you're going to go in your family. And, and so the consequences of these actions came down in David's life. Now, us, now let's talk about that, that as us as a people. You know, when the first time I ever read that passage of scripture in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Chronicles, it said, if my people, who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. This idea of seeking the father's face, it encompasses this admission that I've been wrong. Yeah. I did yeah. you wrong. I didn't do, I, I did you, I did your word wrong. And I, I had a hard time with that until I learned that when I learned that, that first of all, our ancestors, when we were, we cried out for Barabbas and we said, let the blood of Yeshua be on us and on our children. And prior to that, I, when, I, when, I, when I read back in Leviticus and began to understand that the Most High, when, 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 when Israel as a nation made a promise before the Most High and said, we will do as you command, I did it too. I did it as a direct descendant of those people who did it. I was in them. And the mo and that's what I mean when I'm talking about how the most high sees things. Like he don't see just me. He sees me, my offspring, my my forefathers. He sees us all in one. Yeah, I and think so Elder Shoulders, uh, I'm sorry, brother. Uh, ahead, Elder Shoulders, you, you mentioned in the class before that when when the most high says, before I formed you in, in your in your mother's womb, I knew you. And when he looked at Abraham and said, you shall be the father of many nations. When he said that, he saw their seed. I mean, he knew all the generations already that will come from them. He knew all the seeds through their lineage that will come. And so, yeah, so it, so the, the, on our children's head, our heads, our children's heads, they know it. Some of them probably knowingly did it, but I think they were trying to boast in their pride and ego and didn't realize the level of curse that they were putting upon themselves in generations after them. You know, just back, you know, on what you're saying, you know, and it's about, and, and what you were also saying, uh, uh, D-Matt, is when we're born in this world, we admire our parents to the to the highest degree. And so whatever, we, we determine our right and our wrong initially from what we see them doing. All right. But then as we grow up and we learn the ways of the most high we realize that some of the things that they were doing were not lining up with what the most high said and so the most high challenges us to repent of those things that we were involved in because of our parents because of our brothers because of our sisters because of our even our wives and he says if you're not if you're not willing to deny them for me you're not worthy of me Y'all get what I'm saying? So he's talking about influence. And so when we start talking about these generations, uh, you know, he's talking about the generational influences that our ancestors have, have had. And we do take pride in some of those things that were passed down to us. And he said, can you love me more than you like, than you love the generational things that were, that were passed that were passed on to you? So that, that's, that's one major thing. Another thing that I see and this that's critical for us as a nation is that the ability 
the ability to even come to the point to know the information about repentance is something that he has to give. Mm -hmm. Because he locked in a time frame for Israel and said, you know, y'all gonna be blind. You ain't gonna be able to hear. And there's nothing you're gonna be able to do about it. Y'all get what I'm saying? So it's not like I can just make up my mind. You know, the the reason that I'm here with an open mind and open to his grace and mercy is because I'm a part of the remnant that he elected to wake up at this particular. I hope this making sense. But there's a group that he says is not going to wake up until, you know, I open the door for them to wake up. And that's why, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this script and, I, and I'll, I'll push it back over to y'all. All right. So this is Leviticus uh, 26. And, you know, he, he goes through all the things that we're, we're having to go through in the land. And he comes back, you know, then while we're scattered uh, all over the place. And, uh, and he talks about us being in the land of our enemies. Uh, you, you know, in verse 38, he says, and you shall perish among the heathen and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. So he's telling us, I mean, you know, we've been getting eaten up in the land of our enemies. And then he says, and they that are left of you shall pine away in, in their iniquity. So we're, we're pining away in our own iniquity in your enemy's land and also in the iniquity of their fathers they shall pine away with them. So not only are we pining away with our own iniquity in this land, but we're still dealing with the iniquity of our fathers in this land. And then he said, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and then also they have walked contrary unto me. We, we got to tell him, yes, we have walked opposite of what you have wanted us for and that i also have walked contrary unto them in other words yeah i turned my direction somewhere else y'all get y'all catch that he's saying not only are you gonna have to confess that you turn but you're gonna have to confess that i did too i put my focus somewhere else and then uh you know and then he said uh and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humble, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. We got to accept our own punishment for what we've done. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, which will I remember, and I will remember the land. Y'all get that? So there's this process that has to happen with Israel, you know, before we can get back to the land. He said, I'm not even going to remember the land until we take care of this other stuff. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you go back in the land because the reason I kicked you out of the land was because you're iniquity. I'm not just going to let you go back in your iniquity. That's why that's another thing, the reason, and we can pick out a lot of scriptures it said that there's no way that the people that's over there now can be the real people because you can't go back to that land full of iniquity if you're the real people. He's just not going to allow it. But anyway, I just wanted to share that and push it back to y'all and see what uh, what you think. The train got back on the track, I remember. All right. <laughs> All praise the most high. But it's, it's actually in line with what you were saying. I, um, I am noticing in a very clear and present fashion now, the number of Yasharel of us, the Bruges, who willfully don't want to know the truth. They will say our, they, they will say it. I don't want to know. I like my life. I like what I have. I like what I have achieved. I, the, the, this quality of whatever it may be is what I choose and I don't want to let it go. And, 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 and here recently, that kind of conversation started with a question. And the question was, are you noticing any prophecies fulfilling right now? And they didn't want to even address it. They, 
the 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 outward expression was we would rather just be ignorant, knowing that we're ignorant because of whatever reasons, you know, whether it was what we've been through, what my childhood was like, what the neighborhood was like growing up, whatever it may have been. Then I've seen where um, 2 Timothy 3 is, is, is unfolding. People, Yasharel is still hard-headed and stiff-necked, still choosing themselves and the pleasures of this world over the most high. But then have the nerve to say things like, Yah knows my heart. Well, my wife says it all the time. If you really believe that, then that should put the fear of Yah in you. If he knows what's in here, because he, these, the, these are the secret things that people hold in here and in here. So the lawlessness that is abounding, it's, it's, it's very noticeable to me. The, and then the refusal to repent. You know, I, a near and dear person in my life uh, who said not long ago that they wish that there was a middle ground. And the first person that came to mind was that pastor, I think his name is Travis somebody, that said he wished he could have been there and when y'all created to make something in between male and female. And, and the person that I know said that he wished there was a middle ground um, that they, you know, basically straddle the fence. You know, you could partake in the things that they like doing and make that feels good to them and also please yeah. And, and so then another friend of ours said there has to be a hard line, high or cold, no lukewarm. And all I said was the truth. So that's what, that's, that, 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 that that's Yasharel. That's, that's, from Israel saying that, that those are the ones who are the descendants of the tribes saying things like this. So Romans 11, I think that's where it is, where it talks about the remnant, the remnant uh, that, that will understand and then the rest that won't. Had a conversation recently with my wife and I said, I have to be okay with even those that I love dearly and I'm very close to not even wanting to know or or hear the perspective or hear the truth from someone like myself and be okay with no me knowing the potential road they're heading down but also trusting that the most high will not lose one and also trusting that the most high knows what it's going to take and when it will, it will, when, when they will get to the point of, okay, I choose Yah, and they wake up. But it goes back to the refusal. The, because what's been echoing around in my mind for a few months now is repent. Repent for the kingdom of Yah is at hand. That's what I've just been, just been up here. And, and what I'm noticing is the refusal to repent. And thinking that a lifestyle or a certain achievement according to the world status means you've achieved a level of acceptance, you know, to uh, with with the Most High. But the Most High says, "If you love me, follow my commandments." You're not following His commandments if you're, you know, if you, if you're not treating loving your neighbor as yourself. I'll leave it at that. Um, but there's some things I'm, I'm observing and. Um, I just see a lot of people choosing themselves over you Yeah, and so yeah. that's 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 so important what you're saying because that's because I'm with you, and so that was another reason you know to talk about this 2025 thing because I, I'm 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 looking at it. I'm saying, oh, we well, you know approaching how close are we to that that first seal being removed, right? Because when you really study that first seal. And we're gonna we're gonna do some more studies on the first seal. The first seal point to the fact that this is the beginning of sorrow, but it also points to the fact that the release of those four horsemen is intentionally released to add fear to Israel, so that Israel can repent. That's implied in the scripture. So, and, and we gotta go back and look at that again. So. 
the first seal is to set the stage for us to start waking up to repentance. And so now we got to go back and we got to study. If that's if that's the beginning of sorrow, then we got to go back and find all of these beginning of sorrow and birth pain scriptures and relate all that together. And so, we, we you know, we're definitely going to do that. But that's where we're headed, I believe. I, I really do believe that's where we're headed. And whether or not the two, 2025 thing happens in 2025, you know, or 2026, 2027, something is going to happen soon. And so the question is, are we prepared for, or do, you know, some people don't even believe that anything's going to happen at all. I don't want to know. I mean, you put it right in front of them and say, I mean, just today, I got, I got it down a few scriptures that came to mind of what, to answer the question, what prophecies do I, do, am I noticing fulfilling right now? Matthew 24, 2 Timothy 3, 1 Timothy 4, Romans 11, Zechariah 2, and even some of Obadiah, I'm watching, but then Romans, I mean, uh, Revelation 6, I thought about it too today, Elder, and, but it's it's the stiff neck hard-headedness, and it's the it's it's that antichrist spirit that a lot of us don't even realize that we're following. I mean, think about what's right is wrong, what's what's true is a lie, what's a lie is true, what's what what was born one way is is, is another way. Everything is counterfeit. Everything is opposite. Everything is contrary. Everything points to who the ruler is of this world more so today than I've ever seen in my lifetime. And I know that my and my father's 93 years old and he said recently, this is the worst he's ever seen it. Yeah, that says a lot. A lot. 93 years old. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a big he, he was here during the Great Depression and Jim Crow and civil rights and 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 all and in the Vietnam War and the Korean War. He said this is the worst he's ever seen it. Wow. A 93 year old Gullah Geechee, Yoruba, Hebrew man. Hmm. Well, to your point about preparing, um, Kendall. I mean, there, 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 there can you know, there can be no preparing until there's an awakening. Hmm. And I remember when um, when I, I uh, you know went to the like the next level of waking up. You know, you know, my, I, I started having some arousals, if you will in 2012 around that time frame when I was just really questioning everything about what I'd been experiencing with church. And then when 2019 came around and everything I shut down, <clears throat> I, I was really, you know, seeking the most high about what was happening. And, um, and I came across some scriptures in, in Amos and it was talking about all these, these disasters that had been brought forth uh, by the most high and uh, and he, he he says very clearly you know after all these different events he said you know I, i've done these things to you and those around you but you have not returned to me and so i, I began to meditate on that and I, and and, uh, and i was like all right father if, if you want us and i'm still thinking in terms of the the church universal you know, as we, as I kind of been raised up in that, in, in, uh, in, in Christianity, um, I began to ask, ask the question, well, Father, you know, with the church so segmented today, who's responsible for leading uh, your people back to you? And, you know, you, you, you know, cause you know, scripture, you know, talks about a Moses and Joshua and in the prophets and the judges and, you know, you know, people that were leading a, a, a group of people who you know who knew who they were by birthright, you know, leading them. And I was like, who's responsible for doing it? And I just remember him so clearly saying to me, you asking me the wrong question. Instead of you asking me who's going to be lead my people, you should be asking me who my people are. And that that just really, really, it really challenged, it really challenged me. And so when you think about, you know, the question, I don't know if this is making a full circle, but the question that you asked at the top. You know what? What do we think is going to be happening? You know, it's going to happen. That's going to lead to this depopulation of folks. I, I think the answer is in Amos. You know, all those you know those things that happened then. I think they're going to happen again. And 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 he's going to be doing all those things to accomplish 
uh, you know, his will on, on one end to, you know, to judge and to punish and to correct and to all those things that uh, you, you would do, you know, like he did in Egypt, to kind of, you know, to, to, you know, to address Pharaoh. But he's also going to be doing, hey, I'm doing this for my people, too, because y'all have to know that you belong to me. In the, in the whole of creation, all of this happening on this earth today is happening because of his relationship with us. And so I really appreciate you bringing out that scripture in Leviticus 26, where he said, you know what, y'all have moved away from me, but then you moving away from me and I'm having to punish you, I've moved away from you too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we, we all going to have to come back together. And so this, these are some things I'm going to do to get your attention. I've already, it's, it's already, I'm already reoriented back towards you, but now you need to come back towards me and wake up and see who I am and see who you are relative to me so that we can, uh, we can move this thing forward and, and we can, uh, you know, fulfill this covenant. That That's so true, right? That is so true. Um, one thing that I, I pray about and just kind of talk with the most high about is, you know, our people are, in a in a place where we're inundated with the, the 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 false the false narrative and the false things that are put out there. For instance, today I was listening to a radio show, and there was a commercial that came on, and it, and it was a religious commercial, and and the, and the host said, uh, "Whatever you call uh, your source, you know, you can call it God, you can call it whatever. It doesn't matter what you call it." And he kept saying it, so I turned it off and I just shook my head. I'm like. That's what we've been inundated with, this, this steering us away from knowing the name of our Elohim. And so if we the, the further the further away we get from knowing his name with adding all these other false names and all these other um, these other words that we're trying that we're putting his name on in vain onto, like the golden calf, we lose sight on understanding. If my people who are called by my name, if we don't know what is what Yah's name is, then you know the remnant. The remnant know now, but it's sad for me to see how many of Israel, true Israel. When I say true Israel, I mean the trail tribes, the scattered people. We're we're not even trying to know his name because we're listening to all the lies. And well, the only reason we can, we only reason we can do that, not to cut y'all, but I think it's important to drop this in. And the only reason we can do that and be attracted to this other stuff uh, is because of the iniquity is in us. You know, you, you think about we're, we're stiff neck, man. I mean, we if, if, if we are inclined to go every way except towards him. Yeah, we I mean, we we you know, I don't care how minute it is. I don't care how dull that that's that 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 shine is. If, if it will, anything can capture our attention. We've been that way forever. I mean, think about it. You may have heard me say this. You remember? Do you remember the story of, of Jacob and and how he got his spotted sheep to re, to reproduce and become the the larger of the different different um different groups of sheep? And it, what it boils down to is what you, what you put before the, their eyes, they become. And that has been used on us for a long time. As we use on us since Canaan, you know, since the, the, the daughters of Canaan, they tempted uh, the, I think it was some of the, the sons of, of, of Adam to come down from, from the mountain. That what you put, put before the eyes, they become. That has been the thing that is always lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life that has gotten us. Yeah. And you're right, Hank. You know, we, we are hard headed, stiff necked. There's a scripture that there was a pastor that says, and the Hebrew men were giving much to women. Uh, I can't remember where it's, I remember seeing it. I just can't remember what source it is. There, there is a perpetual stronghold that if we don't fast and, 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 and pray, if we don't seek the most high, then it becomes normal for us. It becomes, you know, this, this is what we do. It becomes a generational, hey, your grandfather did it. I did it. I expect you to do it. You know, I remember when I was in my twenties, I was told to, uh, like 20, 19, 20 years old, I was told to go, you know, sold, sold my royal oats to, to find out what I like. I believed it then. I didn't know any better. But those are kind of things that we we're competing with. And so the the 
the thousands of years that of, of, of Satan's plot, plot against us has been has been so profound that looking looking at it now, I see why the struggle is so great, but I see why we must. I mean, that there's also a need for us to seriously turn and seriously repent and seriously seek the Most High, because if we don't, what does the Scripture say, Elder? If it if Yah does not redeem the time, even the very elect will be deceived. Is that right? Yeah, he said. That, yeah, if, if, you know, if it were possible, you know, if it were possible. Yeah, he, he's not going to allow it. But if it were possible, we would be. Yeah, that's uh, you know, and and it goes back to you know when you talk about the name, and I just real short, you know, there's a scripture when he's talking about during tribulation period where Israel wakes up. And he started talking about, um, you know, who, whosoever shall call up on the name, and in, in, in the in the King James said, "The Lord shall be saved," but it don't give you his name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Y'all see how, and see that show you how powerful his name is. Did, did you took his name out? Right, right. Is it because you just can't say the Lord? Hey, no. that's his name. He he's he's saying you're gonna have to identify me by name. So uh mm -hmm. I see you guys up now at chapter two queued up. But I wanna uh, before you read that, I wanna add, add my little two cents to what we're talking about. Hank, you made mention of it, and Dante, you made mention of it as well. That Israel, we are stiff necked. The most high picked the most stiff necked people on the planet. I mean, he really did. I think he picked us because we were stiff necked. He knew the most stiff-necked stiff people in the heavens. I mean, you talk about taking the beating and and and, and keeping keeping it moving. I mean, what, what was the old Timex commercial? Takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. I mean, we've only been ticking because the Most High has allowed us to continue to tick on. But we're stiff-necked. I mean, we take a beating. We've taken beatings from the Most High and then almost almost just defiantly looked in his look in his eye and said, "Yeah, I'm I'm sitting down, but on the inside, I'm standing up." You know, it, that, that kind of mindset that we've had with the most high as the people. And, and so when we've been, for people who've been as stiff-necked as we are by nature and 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 been under the yoke that, that we've been under for so long, it, you know, there's a hardness that comes as a result of just being under oppression. There's a hardness that comes, uh, I, 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 my, I, can, I can take this, but I think what the most high is... What, 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 what we're going to read, read in Zephaniah and, and what the Most High is, understands about his people is that I had a prayer group one time, and uh, it was just me and a couple of brothers during the original, when we started first started awakening, realized who we were. And the question came up in the, in the conversation and said, what's it going to take? Because we were hungry for Israel to really start to get this and the brothers and the, that we were talking to, to get what we're talking about and can't they see it? And so what's it going to take for for us to come to get, come to get together on this thing and recognize it? And sure enough, the, the the answer that came to my mind, I said, it, it was like it was like Mr. T in my mind. Pain. Pain. The, the pain is what gets our attention. Pain is what makes us to, is, is what gets us to, to move. Pain. And so this idea that Israel is going to wake up as a whole without pain is just not realistic because we are rebellious. We are we are idolatrous. We are, I mean, the most I know this about us. He knows this about his people. He knows that the only thing that's going to get my people to, 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 to call on my name, if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and, 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 and you know, it's, it's pain. I got to give them the whooping of a lifetime, of a legacy. I got to beat on them until they finally break in under the pressure of the pain. And so when I look at these things that are happening worldwide right now, it's the precursor to the pain that Israel is going to be experiencing pretty soon. I'd like to read this real quick and, 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 and I won't be long. This is um the Apocalypse of Abraham in the last chapter, chapter 30. And this is Abraham speaking. He says, while I was still, while I was still, uh, while he was still speaking to me, I found myself on earth again. And I said, eternal one, I am no longer in glory on high. Still, there is the matter which my soul longs to know and understand that, that is not revealed to me. And he said, I will explain to you the things you desire in your heart to know, which are the ten plagues which I prepared against the heathen nations 
and which have designed, which have which, which have been destined to begin at the passing of the twelfth hour of the age of the earth. It says, hear therefore what I tell you, because it will come to pass. The first, the first is the sorrow and pain and need of, by way of sickness. It said the second, the massive burning and destruction of many cities. The third, the destruction of pest, the destruction and pestilence and cities of, of cities and animals and cattle. He said the fourth, uh, the, uh, hunger of the whole world and its people. The fifth, among the rulers, destruction by means of earthquake and sword. The ninth, the sixth, the increase of hail and snow. The seventh, wild beasts will be their gra will be their grave. Animals will kill them. Uh, the the eighth. Hunger and pestilence will change their course of destruction and alternate with and alternate with destruction. The ninth punishment, execution by the sword and flight and distress. The tenth thunder and voices and destructive earthquake. And then chapter thirty one. And then I will sound the trumpet in the air, and I will send my elect one, the chosen one, and he will have all measure of my power, and will and he will have one measure of all my power. He will summon my people who were despised from all nations, and I will send fire upon those who have insulted them and who have ruled over them in this age. It's like all of that has to happen before Israel gets to a place where they're even prepared to seek his face as a whole. When we're even prepared, the pain of all those events are the setup for us to as a people. That's just my take on it. What do you say, y'all? Yeah, I mean, I was going to say something similar to that, uh, too. I mean, you know, we've got to see a lot. When you, when you think of what all we've gone through as people, you know, we've, you know, we watched as we were taken from ships, I mean, you know, taken from our land, separated from our wives, raped, watched our wives raped, watched our children taken away from and burned at stake. We went to these other countries with our captors and watched them kill over 90% of the indigenous population. I want you to think, think about that. They wiped out in their own writings whole continents of people. You know, we're going to look at we're going to look at it when we get back together again. Between the year 1500 and 1600, they admit that they killed 56 million people mm. wow that's enough to underestimate yeah they're, they're underestimating 56 million slaughtered you know and during during columbus week i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna pull up uh you know the the bishop's uh you know diary on what they, they you know they, they were just killing people by sport cutting them in half see if you could just cut them in half in one slice you know just brutal stuff so we saw all of these cruelties and still, as a people, had repented. So it goes back to what what you were saying. He's it's going to get a lot worse for us, you know. And that's why the Most High talks about being hot or cold. I rather you be hot or cold because if you're an extreme, even if you're extreme in your evil, once you repent, you're going to be extreme in your righteousness. Y'all you know get what I'm saying? So th that's the reason I know when we were in the heavens with Him, we were all about Him. And then we got down here, we went completely in the opposite direction because we were dedicated to whatever it was we were doing, <laughs> be it good or evil. All right. So anyway, I just wanted to bring this up for us to uh, meditate on, giving it 2025 and all the things coming up and something for us to watch in prophecy. And he's talking to Israel. And he says, gather yourself together, ye, uh, ye gather together, old nation, not desired. Talking about Israel. Well, we're not a desired people. He said, before the decree bring forth, before the day passes, the uh, child, before the fierce anger of, the, uh, of Yahuwah come upon you, before the day of Yahuwah's anger come upon you. So he's saying, before that day hits, he says, seek Yahuwah, all meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment, seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be, he shall be hid in the day of Yahuwah's anger. And then he says this, as, as a sign to watch for, and I want I want to see if this rings anything. It said, "For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up." I think we need to focus on that. 
Because what, where are they destroying? Where is Israel right now destroying everything? Gaza. In Gaza. Yep. So if we see the if if it get so bad over there that Gaza is completely forsaken, then we're 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 on this on the verge of this where he's saying y'all need to gather yourself together. Y'all need to y'all need to repent. Because the decree is getting ready to go forth. Y'all get what I'm saying? So I think that's a critical, you know, I think that's a critical prophecy for us, for us to uh uh have our eye on along with all these other things that we're that we're looking at. But yeah, I just wanted to share that as an added, since those things are going on with in, you know, with the Palestinians and all that, you know, uh, you know, in Gaza, you know, is there a scripture that, that relates to that, that could relate to that, and it's something for us to be watching. So but yeah, uh so I appreciate everybody coming out and uh, talk talking about this and uh you know we barely scratched the surface. You know, we we could really just you get into it. But I, I I think it's important that, you know, uh, you know, we get to we get to talk about these things. All right. All, All right, right, fellas. All right. All right. Yeah, so, see you next time. Shalom. 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 In a shocking 1700s historical document of black Americans, a German professor used the term Negro as a reference to black Jews both in Africa and in Portugal. The author also makes a clear distinction between the black Jews and black Moors. The Moors were largely a distinctly different mixture of black people, most of whom had converted to the Muslim faith. The author candidly points out that the black Jews were specifically targeted for the slave trade, and that the black Moors were intentionally avoided and that the Negroes also known as Black Jews were then sent to the Americas during the slave trade. Get your ebook and audiobook bundle today. Choose from the following three options. Option 1. Get free copies of the original 1700s documents only. Option 2. Get an easy-to-read edited ebook, plus free copies of the original 1700s document for a low price of $10. Option 3. Get an audiobook for easy listening, plus the easy to read edited ebook, and also free copies of the original 1700s document for a low bundle price of $15. Learn the real history they don't want you to know.